We have climbed the West Uzambara Mountains, the mysterious Lushoto Mountains, and when we saw its southern slopes from the top, we dreamed of finding the biggest chameleon species in the African continent, the elephant ear chameleon, the Mellers chameleon, the one horn chameleon, the mysterious chameleon living in this area. We are here on the southern slope of the Western Uzambara Mountains, a little bit south of Lushoto. This is exactly the country which is inhabited by the giant one horde Mellers chameleon. They inhabit these solitary mango trees and they are quite abundant here in this area. This is the landscape at around 800 meters elevation at the southern slope of the western Uzambara mountains where the gentle giants, the one-horned chameleons, thrive. They live in these valleys which are turned to agricultural landscape with dominant trees of mangoes. They inhabit their canopies and are usually found in these valleys which were cold water in the form of small creeks and during the night the cold air just goes down through these valleys to the bottom of the mountains and makes the environment much cooler than the surrounding savanna. This beautiful giant lives here on the foot of the Western Uzambara Mountains along a creek in an agriculturally used area and thrives here. He is perfectly hydrated. The air humidity at daytime is less than 40%. The temperature is quite mild. When we have a little bit of cloud cover, the temperatures do not exceed 26, 27 degrees. When it's sunny, it can go slightly above 30 degrees centigrade. A fantastic male. This is a typical biotope of the giant one-horn Mellers chameleon here on the foot of the Usambara mountains. There is a little creek running downhill, wearing very cold water from the high altitude of the Usambara mountains, making this tiny valley a little bit cooler and building the source for the nighttime fog. And here in the mango trees all around, the Mellers chameleons thrive. A wonderful Mellers chameleon photographed in his biotope at the foot of Western Uzambara Mountains at about 800 meters high. <laughs> Meet the gentle giant of the Uzambara Mountains. This is the Mellers chameleon, sometimes called the elephant ear chameleon, sometimes one horn chameleon. But the fact is, it is the biggest chameleon of continental Africa. He lives here on the southern slopes of the Usambara West Mountains in an agriculturally used land. It was deforested and turned into orchards and fields 
and uh, lots of crops are grown here including mango trees uh, which you can see behind these gentle giants have adapted to life in this environment and they occupy the high canopies of the trees most of the mango trees they live here in an environment which uh, is defined by solitary mango trees and one chameleon per tree can be found in the most dense parts of this population. They do not live together. They are quite aggressive to each other because this huge body mass needs to be fed by tiny little insects that they eat. They do not eat big insects. They eat tiny little pollinators, including bees, wasps, flies, and small beetles, which is evident based on the analysis of their thesis and this is why they need a relatively big area to feed them so they cannot stand if another member of their species is close to them they are very aggressive and if two adult chameleons meet they can kill each other but enjoy the beauty of that giant and the gentle giant of the southern slope of usambara mountains here the mellers chameleon the beauty of this area. Please meet Abu, this is my good friend here from Lushoto, from the West Uzambara Mountains. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> what do you have on your hand? I have very, very nice and beautiful chameleon, which is called giant chameleon, or one horn chameleon. Yes. Why? Now, we have found it at around 800 meters. So does it mean it does not live on the top of mountain? It, yeah. They live only here? They are only living here in Usambala mountain, the escarpment of the mountain. I see, on the foothills, right? On the foothills, the right? foothills yeah. Good. Now, do you know what they eat? Flies. They eat flies, flies right? Yeah, they flies. do not eat something big, right? They eat only yeah, they tiny eat very flies. Very small, very small. And, and the tongue is like magnet, oh? Yeah, yes, like sure. Like half meters, I don't know, uh, but the tongue is like magnet, oh? Yes. Which is very quickly and hard yeah. to see. If it's hunting the animal, or uh, flies or whatever. Good. So tell us, is it easy to find these beautiful giants here or is it not so easy? It's, uh, it's, it's for some time, if it's much raining, it's more easy. I see. But for the dry season, not too much easy. It's, it's not so hard, easy, yeah, right? Yes. And can you find uh, many specimens in one tree or only one? Sometimes two to three, one tree. I see. Yes, if it's, if it's seasonal, raining season. I see. Yes. This is because they mate, right? Yeah, because they sure. breed. They, they ah, I see. And outside of the rainy season, you, you find how many per one tree? Oh, oh, maybe one. Only one, zero. right? What is the relationship of the humans to these animals here? How, how do they perceive them? Do they like them or do, are they afraid of they're them? They're afraid of this chameleon. They think if you hold the chameleon, it's going to be very bad luck. I see. But not true. But when I was young, also I was afraid in this. I see. But now I'm not afraid. You know. Good. Do they believe they are poisonous also? They believe it too, yeah. yeah they I believe see. it's poisonous, but it's not poisonous. Okay, well, it's, it's of course not poisonous. Animals, yes. Yeah. It's Love actually it. very good to have a chameleon here because it uh, keeps the environment free of bad insects, yeah, right? For sure, for sure. Exactly. For sure, it's very good for mosquito. Yeah, you can use this. As, as you can put it in, even inside the houses, then it can attract the mosquitoes. Exactly. Which is really, really nice place. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So actually, name. actually, how you how you say friend in Kiswahili? Rafiki. Rafiki. Good so. Rafiki. so it's good Rafiki. <laughs> good Rafiki. Yeah, Kinyonga Rafiki. Kinyonga Rafiki. <laughs> Thank Kinyonga you so means much. Lord in terrors. Yes, cool. Lord in Lord in terrors, which yeah. is really really nice, and I love it. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Abu. You're welcome, guys. One very spectacular thing uh, of these gentle giants is how they hydrate. Imagine this huge body weighing around 300 to 350 gram needs to get lots of water. But the problem is in these areas, there is no rain for many, many months. There's no single drop of water falling down the skies. So how they hydrate? Of course, if there is a rainy season, they drink the water, but they have a special trick. First, they do not need 
too high temperatures, they hide high in the canopies in deep shade so that they make a use of breeze to cool their heavy bodies down. Second, they make a use of specific microbiotopes. They do not live everywhere. They live only in a special area which is confined to small uh, wadis, small uh, riverbeds that run from the upper parts of the Uzambara mountains and where cold water which cools down the environment and in the night time the cold uh, air from up there goes down through the valleys cooling the whole environment da down and this is when they use the trick of drinking fog because then the canopies are very humid the humidity raises up to 100 percent and they drink the fog so that they can survive another and another and another day without any drop of liquid water. This is spectacular how such a huge animal is adapted to this special environment and how they survive here. One more spectacular thing about these giants is that they do not feed on big insects. They really eat on very tiny ones. How they can feed enough is uh, shown on the tree behind. This is a mango tree and this is now having flowers. What these giants do is they climb high up into the canopies and come close to the blooming flowers of mango trees or other trees which they inhabit and they then only wait for the pollinators to come to these flowers to feed on the nectar and, and collect the pollen and then they shoot them with their projective tongue. This is why uh, they do not eat big animals, they are really fully saturated uh, with tiny little pollinators which measure maximum one and a half centimeter but they of course need to eat tons of them yeah? and this is how these giants uh, survive here in this environment otherwise they would not be able to find enough food. There are two biggest joys of scientists studying chameleon. The first is to find such a beauty in the wild. And the second is, after you examine it, after you do take measurements, after you study the animal, to release it back to the wild where it belongs to. Ciao, ciao. Quaeri Kinyonga. I hope you enjoyed the indigenous African atmosphere and landscape. I will show you more. Stay tuned.